Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you again from the Storage Review Lab. And quite honestly, I don't know what we're doing here today. Yeah, I keep on looking at what things we can put TrueNAS on. and But you don't have to put it on everything. And in fact, we're supposed to send this out. So we this system here was a $110 system we bought off Newegg, eight years old. And all we did was throw a, a Lexar drive inside their new SATA SSD for 30 bucks. So for under a buck fifty, we had a system that was capable of handling ninety six and a half percent of of uh, the needs of most compute users. Easily handle uh, web browsing, light applications, that sort of thing. And I'm supposed to be boxing it up today to send it to our winner. But before I do that, Kevin takes it and makes some sort of abomination for TrueNAS again. Yes. Why? Because I could. Okay. So I've got pieces here. The optical drive has been removed. It has not been damaged. Yeah, so for, yeah, the poor winner guy is looking at his at his prize like, no, what have you done? The 500 gig um, Seagate hard drive that was inside has been removed. Um, so I know you had two SATA connections in this in this system. So what what have you done? Okay, so on board, um, well, for TrueNAS or any other installation, you you want something for boot drive and you want your storage. So right. we're using Mir Storage, and we have in our budget bill, to, uh, since we saved so much money, because I think we're at $170 for this, not including uh, the two hard drives. Okay, well, before, so that's 110 for the chassis, 30 for the SSD. Yeah. And what we're, what else? So uh, it's really cheap to get a 10 gig uh, <laughs> car these days. So we have an old Emulex uh, dual port 10 gig adapter, and these can be had for about 18 or $19 on eBay. I'm just happy you didn't throw a 100 gig card in there for it. It would fit. Two hard drives. It would fit. So the system does have two PCIe slots, which again, it was back. It's oh wait, okay. So it has three PCI slots. Three, two uh, by sixteen, and one that's a uh, by one. Whatever. I think. So you go back to it, and for a hundred and nine dollars, we got a seven or eight year old platform that's still wildly capable. And after you took out the optical, you had, but that only gives you two SATA spots. What else have you done? So the board itself has uh, four SATA attachment oh, points, and it only has uh, two SATA power cables. I just used a SATA power splitter. That oh, was f- okay. So I see what we've done here. We've wedged. Let me see if I can not get this in the fan. We've wedged the SSD and a eight, 18 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro. Two 18 terabyte. Well, yeah, but just one securely into the. It's uh, resting on a postcard. Don't worry. Oh, hold on into the optical base slot. So you've got your power, you've got your SATA connection, you added a splitter for the SSD, I'm with you there. And it's resting on the metal on a postcard. So the point being with this particular uh, situation is the five and a quarter bay are not that difficult to find a cheap adapter that holds a three and a half inch drive and a two and a half inch drive together. More securely than this? Well, I would have to buy it on eBay or Amazon. It would not be here in like 15 minutes. So we couldn't be bothered to wait a day and a half or two no. days to get something to properly hold this. So he stacked them in a bay with no ventilation, mind you, and a postcard. Yeah. So the point being, though, it works. Um, this is what I deal with. So now you might be asking, it's, it's making uh, the system operate outside of its... Uh, it's an intended use case. It has a 240 watt uh, yeah. power supply. Okay. So we're not, um, it's not overtasking it by any means on that front. And we have um, four set of ports on the motherboard. So depending on how your cable management is, you can support four drives. We're just using this three. This is terrible cable management. Well, this is just something to like, it was a proof case of could we do it. And there are, I know IC Doc and others have cheap adapters that can fit exactly in this bay and do it securely without the things kind of dangling. This bay was just using their onboard rails and will uh, has some right. uh, uh, vibration dampeners. Well, and that's stuff. that's where this uh, initial drive was was stowed away. So that is gone, and now you've opted um, for this hundred. Would we come up with one seventy? Yeah, hundred and seventy dollar build, and you thought. Huh, I know. Let's put 36 terabytes of Iron Wolf Pro in there. Yeah, well, like a normal person would. So I'm looking at this not as a um, like total cost. It's more of the... <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> well, it's more of the... You look at uh, a two-bay uh, NAS that you find from a Synology or a QNAP or others in the space, and your 
cost for those, they're pretty expensive. A, a well-equipped unit is going to be flowing between four and five hundred dollars. Yeah, a two bay uh, with two and a half gig is about four hundred from QNAP right now on their 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 light enterprise line. Uh, Synology, I think the uh, two twenty plus is about three ten or so. Yeah, and, and neither they, one has ten gig on it. Well, they don't, and uh, you. For both of those to add in, uh, I think QNAP, they have some onboard options. Uh, Synology, uh, your onboard 10 gig is going to put you over $1,000, or uh, you could find a model like a 5 or 6 bay unit that uh, would have a slot open. Then you could put something in, but it has to be on their quality list to function. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get past all of that. $170, 2 bay NAS with, with 10 gig. With 1,500 of hard drives added. Well, I mean, you could use... Smaller hard drives or SSDs or whatever you want to have in there. Okay. But the point being, though, you have a platform that could be, well, that is running compression and it does really well. All right, it does all the true NAS goodness. We get it. That's pretty cool. It's got a lot of capacity. It's got an SSD. It's even got two fans to kind of keep things uh, okay if you have the lid on it. Um, it has three fans. Okay, even better. Yeah. So 10 gig, you know, we do it for fun. But it does have a productive use here, and especially if you want to do something like this, if you're uh, learning uh, NAS, if you're learning uh, how to share sh storage, if you're developing an application, want to mess around with it on a box like this for a budget of almost nothing, um, 10 gigs handy, right? Well, definitely. I mean, you're you're in the realm of if you're moving ISOs around or trying to get. Um, uh, decent uh, block or file storage to a VMware host, a Hyper-V host, something. Um, ten, 10 gig is going to push you, you're good, well, it'll be 10 times faster than 1 gig. and it's Well, theoretically, but on this configuration, what is it, two or three times maybe? Uh, we saturated 10 gig. All right, so what have we done? What, tell us about the performance numbers. So uh, on uh, sequential large block read, uh, we were at around one gigabyte per second. Uh, right, we we're at 500 megabytes a second. Okay. And then on the AK sequential, we were around 30,000 IOPS on read and write. Uh, we didn't make a slide for that. Maybe Vince will, in post-production, put some fancy uh, let letters and speed numbers up there for everyone well, to see. The point being, though, is you're you're talking about fairly substantial numbers on a box that is $170 minus storage. Right, minus 1500 in storage be that as it may uh, but it does run we have it pulled up on uh, on uh, Chrome here yeah so right now we're doing um, we have one gig connected because it's sitting on our conference table and we have a workload going at it of just um, well, 116 megabytes per second uh, mm -hmm. read from it but with that CPU uh, CPU usage is really low. I think during our tests uh, we saw it cap out at maybe 45% uh, CPU, which is pretty darn good. And on the uh, RAM side, it's using almost all of its RAM for cache and stuff, but it's not running into problems. Now, we don't have dedupe turned on. We're not crazy, but <laughs> we have... That's debatable, honestly. Yeah, we are running compression. It's Everything is working pretty well on this. And, I mean, are you worried about overheating this one hard drive? Um, that hard drive does get a little bit warmer than the other one. But uh, if you're going into this and looking to uh, add some stability into your very, very cheap build, you could spend another $5 and put a fan over there. Or you could, like, there are a lot of things you could $5, do $5, that's insanity. To protect $1,500 worth of hard drives? Why would you do such a thing? Possibly. But, uh, there's also some RAM slots open, so you're getting by okay with RAM utilization on uh, on TrueNAS. But um, you could, if you were going to get fancy, you could put a little more in. Yeah, I mean, if you want to install like Windows Server 2019, uh, <laughs> data, uh, like Enterprise Edition, maybe you could go that route or Data Center or something. But the <sighs> possibilities are endless. Uh, the possibilities are endless, but they will end on this platform for us today because we've got to send this out to the, the winner. I think we gave this away on TikTok or something. Lucy's always giving stuff away. Check out the socials. Uh, all this stuff goes out of here to uh, home labbers and whoever else wants to mess with it in, a, in its later life. So $170, uh, 10 gig uh, boot drive that's flash. You can add your own storage to it and, uh, and, and get a pretty darn respectable NAS for a pretty miniature budget. Yeah. There you have it. Thanks for checking it out.